Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on the cover of Orchids and Cats, and um, this is going to be straightforward, pretty easy. So hopefully you all remember that this is 10 and a half by 8 and a half, 10 and a half by 8 and a half by 2 and a half inches deep, and that is the, side of, uh, the size of the outside of the album. The inside pages are 8 by 10. So uh, I like to have a half inch uh, around the pages to protect them. So let's go ahead and get started. So these are the papers that I've decided. I, I really like this. this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. It's very strong and bold. And a part of the reason um, I chose uh, a pattern from the 12 by 12 collection pack is because this is eight and a half. So I can't really use an eight by eight sheet unless I want to mat it which you can do, but I've decided um, to use an image from the 12 by 12 collection. So like I said, you can use an eight by eight, but then you're gonna have to do some piecing on this side because it's 10 and a half inches wide and you'll have to do something uh, to cover a little bit more of these three sides, like having a double mat. So having said all that, let's go ahead and get this in. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I'm hoping to do some layering here, um, but I haven't got all that dialed in. So we're just gonna work on getting the base pages in at this point. And I'm gonna apologize in advance. I am in San Diego. I am about three miles away from Miramar uh, Military Station. And we're getting close to their, um, I'm sorry, I'm having a little difficulty getting my words together, getting close to their air show. So you're gonna hear some airplanes in the background and I just can't do anything about that. Um, I did figure out how to solve some of my air conditioning issues, which some of you suffered through earlier, but those airplanes, they just won't, they won't change their schedule for me. Imagine that. <laughs> And there we go. So again, this is from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And that looks lovely. I'm gonna nudge that up just a little bit. Looks good. So this is side A and this is the same side, but I'm, I'm using the flip side for the back. So if I hadn't mentioned it before, I usually have by this point, but if I haven't, I used um, more than one 12 by 12 pack. which is kind of necessary if you're doing an eight by 10 album. It's really hard to get away with just using eight by eights. Well, that's not entirely true. It just means you have to do a lot of color blocking. So I know this is upside down, but I wanna do it upside down because I really want these two trim pieces to be back to back. And I am using cream cardstock, which is now available in our shop, and it's Astro Bright. Um, I get mine at Walmart, and actually the, the paper that you buy from us, you're gonna get, it's also from Walmart. And we've only started carrying it because some people just can't get it. Um, and we sell it to you guys for the same price we pay. Um, we don't mark it up. We just do it for convenience. And I have to say, I'm in San Diego, like I mentioned before, it's getting harder to get. Um, the last few times I've gone to Walmart, I can't, uh, I can't find the paper. I don't know what's going on, but probably part of the whole pandemic supply issue. So I'm gonna take a quick break. I'm not gonna stop filming, but I'm gonna make a little bit of racket while I get I pull in so this is what I'm using Astro Bright cream so like I said we have it in the shop but also um, if you're looking to buy it for yourself at Walmart this is what it looks like Astro Brights there's the number I'm trying to make sure it's not there's no glare on it and uh, the other 
stock that I use uh, for almost everything is the black and it's called Eclipse Black. So typically if uh, you see cream or black, I'm using one or the other. And one of the reasons I like this is this cream, uh, the Astro Bright cream, almost perfectly matches the Graphic 45 tags. Uh, so that's one of the reasons I first came to um, start using it, is it took me a long time to find a cream that matched Graphic 45. So you can learn from my experience. Now you're gonna see a little bit of color difference here. That's because I'm using book binding tape and this is the Astro Brights. The book binding tape is actually white, so you can see the difference. And we uh, did try to sell that, but uh, unfortunately our book binding tape was coming in so damaged that we stopped selling it, the white. We only have the black now. We might start trying to sell it again, but if you're not using book binding, I would recommend, you know, Tyvek or something else, which I can't instruct you on because I've not used the Tyvek, but lots of people say it works for them. But I've given up on trying to do uh, a hinge without some reinforcement. I've just had so much disappointment with cracking. No matter what brand, um, I could just get utterly frustrated. One of the things that frustrates me about the Astro Brights is it doesn't come in 12 by 12. So I don't generally use that to cover the album. It's just everything that's in the inside. Now in this case, I did use the Astro Brights. I used three sheets uh, side by side to get this covered. I like to usually try to use two, get two 12 by 12s to make something happen, but I decided to go ahead and use all three. Just because I know it, it holds up. Okay, so there's the front, the spine, and the back. And this is the 12 by 12 collection. This is the front, this is the back, and then this is a piece that I trimmed off, another piece from, uh, there's a 12 by 12 that has multiple vases on it. And I measured across to see which vase actually wound up hitting the two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by eight and a half inch spine. And this is the one that worked. So that's what I chose. So that's it for now. When we get back in a few minutes, I'll have um, what we're going to work on on the inside. And then at the very end, we'll cover um, the embellishment pieces, which I don't like to do until the end because I'm shifting the album around, uh, getting the pages in and doing lots of other work. So for now, that's it. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and cover the inside or add the inside liners for the book. And this is what I chose. It's the two clock pages. Oh, well, I, there's one per pack, but I used um, a clock page from uh, each one of the packs. And basically, this, I gotta, I gotta figure it out. The cat was here. So this is the correct orientation. I rotated the second sheet around and this, it would have fit like this and I trimmed this side and this side. And the reason I did it that way is because I wanted this frame around it. So once you trim this piece out, rotate the second one around 45 degrees and trim it uh, to eight and three eighths. And then you're gonna trim this to 10 and 3 eighths. Does that make sense? So, and that's because the cover is eight and a half by 10 and a half. It's a half inch larger than the pocket pages. And then you get this sort of built-in frame. I like the clock, but um, you know, it, they're sort of putting it in too many collections, so it doesn't seem, uh, it's not novel anymore. I'd rather have an extra print. And I really don't get the clock with the cat and the orchid anyway. It doesn't seem to be a time thing. 
Okay, so that's in. We're going to do the other side. Then we're going to, I'm going to, with you guys, install one page. Then I'm going to do the rest offline. And then get organized. And when I come back, we're going to embellish the front of the book. And here they are. So this is page one, page two. My magnets are holding the pages together. Page two, page three, page four. Oops, I'm sorry. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, you always want to double check and make sure, first of all, they're all going the right way because it is a pocket page. You could accidentally glue it in upside down and then get them in the order that you want them in. So this is page one. So I'm going to go ahead and slip this on, pull my tape out, show you what I'm doing, and then I'm going to just do the rest offline. And then when we get back together in a few minutes, after I've done some housekeeping, we will embellish the cover. Okay, so once I slip it over the hinge, I like to lay it down to the left and to the right. And what I'm looking for is an even margin around it. Now, if you put your hinge in slightly crooked, it, it might drift up or down. And the way you um, manage that is just to tip it slightly. So you don't have to rest it on the hinge itself you can adjust it slightly so that you get your page in straight. Okay, and then I use my pick tool to get my tape out. Trying not to tear it. Press it into place, and that is page one. So like I said, I'll just do the rest of these offline, and then when we get back, we're going to work on um, embellishing the front. Let's go ahead and get the back out. So there you go. You Some people use glue. I use tape because I have made mistakes before. And if you're using tape, you can use undo to correct it. Hopefully you don't make a mistake, but sometimes it happens. Okay, be back soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne. I'm back and we're going to get started actually embellishing the front of Orchids and Cats. And I want to share with you some of the flowers that I'm using. So both of these are from the Prima brand and they are in the description so if you click show more you're going to see the material list these will be listed there with the links to them but i'll go ahead and tell you what the name is watercolor floral which is the pink one and then the green one is called magic love okay and and i used a couple of the green and a little more of the pink now i've gone ahead and i glued these two pieces down that's going to be kind of the base that i'm going to work around as we embellish the front I happen to have this gorgeous ribbon in my stash and it looks perfect. It's very thin and then I also had this matching ribbon which I used just to tie it to hold it all in place. And this is gonna get added to the front but it's probably gonna be one of the last elements I add. Okay, now from one of the pages there is what looks like some envelopes and I fussy cut that out, there's two of them, and I'm just gonna use these two pieces to sort of add some dimension as I add my flowers. So I have two of these. This is actually a duplicate. I just cut the green part off the top one. Okay, so again, I use these two pieces to anchor it. So there's a floral spray right here of Orchid. So I put it on the last 
uh, the top orchid here and the second to the last here. Now the rest of this I'm just going to fuss around with until we get it to where we like it and then we'll start gluing things down. So my intent is to have a little bit of a spray. I want to have a little bit of a gap at the bottom for my flowers and then we're going to tuck um, these papers in to help f fill it out. And with all that said, I'm going to sit down now and I may wind up standing up again because it just gives me uh, a better overall visual. So I'm gonna set that aside. So like I said, I'm using these two outside ones as an anchor. And a lot of times I'll organize my flowers and then take a picture of it and, um, and then refer back to that because it's really easy to spend many, many hours fussing around with your flowers. So I'm already, I can already tell I like that layout so far. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this guy down. And I like to use my art glitter glue um, on everything. You don't have to, but I really like to. This is um, a place where a lot of people will use a hot glue gun and it's very satisfying short term because you don't have to wait for your glue to dry. But I do think that it dries out and eventually will give out on you. And that's why I go ahead and stick with the art glitter glue. Although, like I said, using um, a heat gun is it just goes so much faster you don't have to hold things in place and it's not that bad just a few seconds okay so we've got these in now I think I am going to put my my bow in the middle so I can go light on the green toward the center and focus on getting the pinks uh, where the bow is going to be and my intent is to have it um, sit a little bit on top of the flowers, like that. So I think I like this pale pink one here. So let's go ahead and get that in place. And you can see I added two pieces of filigree on the corners. Okay, the next thing I think I'm gonna do is try to figure out where I wanna put my bow and then I'll work my flowers in around the rest of the flowers and around the bow. Just gonna re-spread this. I want it to be nice and fluffy. I think it's gonna go right right about here. So I'm actually, I'm gonna use some glue, and this always takes a little while because the ribbon just takes a little while to, to grab hold. So I'm gonna hold that in place for a little bit. And then I'm probably gonna come in and put another little flower here and another one up here, and then we're gonna work in our little um, bits of paper. I'm gonna to have to hold that longer. I may actually wind up, I think I'm gonna do that instead. Um, so I don't have, so I, I'm impatient. So what I'm gonna do is put a piece of tape down because the tape will hold it. And then later, when you guys aren't necessarily watching, I will go back and probably add some glue as well. But at least the tape will hold it in place for now so we can continue and get the rest of my flowers and the rest of the bits on. There we go. Okay, there we go. See how it holds right away. But I still think it needs to be reinforced, but it's good for now. I'll get these two little tails to come down. Okay, perfect. All right, so now let's see. That's probably a little too much green. So this might be a good place to add. I like it. That's it. We're going to do it. OK, 
Okay, that's going to be it. So I'm gonna hold everything in place for a minute. Then I'll come around and some of these loose edges I'm gonna tack down. Just to help secure it. Okay, everything's holding up. Then I've got this cute little home sweet home. I'm not sure where that's gonna go. But I think I want to go ahead and put this dimensional piece down here. I may wind up trimming it a little bit so that it fits better. I'm not sure. Oh, I like that. And I actually want it curved. So I'm only going to glue the, the downsides, um, the valleys, so that it can have that nice little curve. I just think it makes it much, much more interesting. butterflies. I think I'm going to add this guy right here. I think I need to add a little more glue here. Ah, I don't know. Maybe I just need to press it in place better. Looks like there was some glue there. Okay. I'm going to look at my packs and see. I don't want to add anything else. And then I have another butterfly that I'm going to add right here. And it's glued right on top of that pink flower. And then I've got this last bit. Um, I'm not sure what I want to do with this. I want a little bit more paper sticking out. I kind of like it, but... See, I have to turn it upside down because of the diagonal here, because the way the the um the pattern was on that I took it out of. What do you guys think? Hmm, feels like I'm forcing that a little bit. Maybe if I cut a little bit out of the center so that it'll settle down a little. So we're gonna cut. Just a little curve, and that way we can get it to tuck in a little bit better. Even a little more. It definitely needs something because there's too much pink here. Let's see, we've got a box full of die cuts, which I haven't used very many in. Oh, well, look here. I haven't used very many inside the book because, as I've told many of you before, that's what I'm going to do. I like um, to add my die cuts and stuff after I add my photos. So that's just kind of my thing. Okay, I like that. And then I did kind of want to do something with this, but I feel like I might be just, that might just be a bit too much. So let's see if we can't find something a little bit smaller. one's a little okay I like it I like it we're gonna do it 
And this is really about just adding and trying and testing and it just takes a little bit of time. Hold that in place for a few minutes. I've got one more butterfly. Do I want to use it or is it too much? Too much. Yep. <coughs> hey, Nella. I'm just gonna press my leaves into that and it's it's good. Nope, it's not. I'm just pinching the back side and trying to press the leaf into the chipboard piece. Probably should use a tool. There we go. How does that look, guys? I like it. I like it. I'll probably fuss around with my ribbon to spread it out a little bit more, but I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. I think it's fun. And I might move my ribbon and tack this down here too so that it's not floating so much. What do you guys think? Do you like the dimension? I think it looks good. There we go. That's it. So that's our cover. And uh, that's a wrap for Orchids and Cats. And like I said, I have a box full of the, the chipboard and I will use it inside the album. Um, but I usually wait until I know where I'm going to put photos. Um, everything you need to make this album is in the description. Click show more and um, you'll first see the material list with the links. And then if you scroll down further, you'll see the cut list for this album. The next time we get back together, I'm going to be doing a walkthrough to show you the entire album. So I'll be back soon. Okay. I, you know, this, this happens. I'm fussing around. I found this and I want one more flower. <laughs> That's the thing with covers. You can keep going and going and going. Okay, so now I think I'm done. I think that looks a little bit more full and a little bit better flow. I like it. Okay, thanks everybody.